watching. Consider this. I'm Melissa Idris and Mishra Kuti. We're going to continue our discussion over the controversy over the ownership and funding of Ta University College, which has opened up far-reaching uh, discussion over the influence of politics in Malaysian life. Now, thank you so much, Dr. Yap Kwak Fong, the president of the Tashian Alumni Association, for being on the show earlier. Now, we have currently on the show Dr. Kenny Ng Biken, legal advisor for the Tashian Alumni Association. Of course, uh, Lim, uh, Lim Guan Ying, the finance minister, continues his conversation with us. I want to talk, gentlemen, about resolutions, where we are right now. Uh, from an outsider's point of view, it looks like there's a standoff since, you know, Guan Ying, you said that you're not in discussions with MCA at the current moment. Uh, where are we in terms of this standoff and resolutions? Because will the staff and the students of Ta UC become collateral damage in this battle? Uh, let's have it. Uh, let's let's go with Dr. Kenny first. Uh, thank you, Melissa, for having me here this evening. Uh, what a joy and honor to be a uh, part of this conversation. Uh, the uh, problem can be easily resolved if you look at it. What is the gist of it? The gist of it is a legal problem. When the foundation, such as our Ta Education Foundation, is set up, it is standard requirement that the uh, power structure, especially the board of trustees, must have at least 50% independent people. And this is a requirement across the board for other foundations as well. And also, when a foundation apply for tax exemption, Similarly, the MOF will impose this uh, uh, requirement. And then uh, when uh, uh, Ta UC was uh, formed in 2013, the government then imposed that condition. But somehow, I think due to oversight, nobody realized it until lately. Okay, so let's say the, those five years, we'll put aside, you say oversight might have been the reason as opposed to some collusion. The issue is now, does that violation of the terms now impose a pressure upon the parties concerned to either relinquish, to now vacate at least 50% of, uh, of the seats on the board of trustees? I mean, what exactly is the legal implication? Do they then... Uh, cease to be uh, viable, uh, uh, you know, uh, recipients of that position? Can they be now forced out as a consequence of this violation? There are consequences are flowing from the fact that you have not complied to the basic requirement. Bear in mind, uh, education in institution like that is also licensed by the education ministry and there are conditions imposed right from the start for this uh, minimum 50% requirement. Similarly, for your tax exemption status now, the MOF can review, and if you don't comply, they can withdraw that tax exemption status now. And then similarly, this is a company limited by guarantee, governed by the Companies Act, and it is under the jurisdiction of our SSM, our Ministry of Domestic Trade and, uh, and uh, Consumer Affairs. They can also show, uh, ask them to show cause why you have not complied. But it seems to me the, com uh, the, the complying with that requirement is quite straightforward. At the moment, they have eight or nine uh, trustees. These are basically a subset of the membership list. They are all uh, uh, renowned MCA members now. What they need have to do is to make sure that at least half of them resign from the board of trustees and appoint uh, members from the community to be independent trustees. Bear in mind this foundation, it is very much standing as a public trustee for the purposes of the community. And rightly, the government those days and the government today wants to ensure that the uh, community independently are represented. Sure. That is the issue. Guaning, what are you going to be doing next? I mean, how are you going to be approaching this standoff? Are you going to be digging your heels in and just waiting them out? No, we, we, we're not digging our heels in. We're coming out with 30 million ringgit. <laughs> so, we are, and that's why we are So you're digging sure. deep into your pockets, really? <laughs> well, you want to put it that way, Shara. But what we want to ensure is that there will be no collateral damage. Mm. That if there's any uh, dispute, let it be between the government and MCA. And uh, so that uh, we want to ensure that the law is observed and complied with. At the same time, we uh, make these funds available to the trust fund so that uh, the welfare of the students and also the institution is not affected.
So there's no collateral damage. In fact, what we want is to take uh, politics of education and also put emphasis back on the welfare of the students and the institution. And I think it is time that uh, education institutions be purely focused, uh, not politically aligned, but purely focused on preparing the future for the young as well as the young for the future. Does this have an expiry date? I mean, I'm wondering in terms of timelines, how how will you be able to determine if there isn't going to be collateral damage? Is there a, a, a you know countdown for when this will will all explode or blow up? No, Melissa, when the money is made available right. for the benefit of the students or institution, how can there be collateral damage? That, the, that, that they are more given uh, now compared to the past. So the so, taps are not going to be turned, turned off, off okay. yes, on the funds. Yes, because we are going to, but we are going to give it to, to the, the trust fund. To, to the alumni to decide how it is to be dispersed. Mm. Is there a possibility for a dialogue between uh, the, the government of the day and their political rivals, in this case at the MCA? Is there a way that actually a consensus can be forged on some, a new norm, as it were, in terms of governance? No, as far as I'm concerned, that what we are, we, are, we are concerned about, or what we are focused on, is simply this, comply with the law. And these laws were actually passed by the previous government. You, you do not even comply with the laws that you have uh, drafted or you, you have approved. Mm. And I think that's wrong. If you do not observe the law, how can you be a lawmaker and at the same time a lawbreaker? So that's, that's simply this. Adhere to the law, make sure that the, the trustees uh, have, gained, have received approval from the minister as required by the law. Make sure that at least 50% are not connected to MCA. So once you fail to, uh, to uh, uh, observe, and you only observe in its breach, we as government got to ensure its compliance. Gentlemen, that's all the time we have on the show tonight. Thank you so much Thank for you. being on the show. Appreciate your time and your insights. Thank you. Thanks, Sharad. Thanks, Thanks, Melissa. Yeah. All right. Appreciate. I'm Melissa Idris. With me, Sharad Curtin. We are signing off for Consider This Tonight. We will catch you same time tomorrow night. Thanks for watching. Good night.